In today's video, I'll share seven things that I've learned about spending and accessing cash in Playa del Carmen that have helped me to save money. We'll cover some simple tips and common mistakes to avoid that will be useful to anyone traveling to Mexico. The first big mistake that many travelers make when coming to Mexico is paying local vendors in USD instead of in pesos. Like many Mexican tourist hotspots, here in Playa del Carmen, it's common to be quoted prices in USD instead of pesos. Pretty much all of the vendors on Fifth Avenue will accept both and often prefer to be paid in dollars. It's even common to find food and spa menus with the prices printed in dollars instead of in pesos. The reason that you want to make your purchases in pesos is because that particular vendor is creating their own exchange rate when they give you the price in dollars. If you decide to pay them in USD, then you're accepting their exchange rate, which is almost always going to be less favorable than the actual market rate. The same logic applies if you are paying with a credit or debit card. You're always going to want to pay in pesos as opposed to in your local currency or in USD. The second mistake goes hand in hand with the first mistake, which is not knowing what the conversion rate or the exchange rate is between Mexican pesos and your home currency. This is an easy fix with a quick Google search or a free currency conversion app. When in doubt, pay with pesos. It's almost always going to be your best option and pesos are also a lot easier to get than USD once you're already in Mexico as that's what's going to be dispensed from all of the local ATMs. The third mistake would be not being selective or doing your research when it comes to which ATM you use to withdraw pesos. Choose the ATM you use wisely as they vary in terms of withdrawal limits, transaction fees, and security features. You typically want to avoid the high traffic standalone ATMs on Fifth Avenue and opt for a major bank brand instead. The best case scenario would be using a brand that is the same as your bank back home because in this case you may have fewer or even no withdrawal fees. I choose to use Scotiabank ATMs here in Playa del Carmen because they have plenty of them that also have their own individual rooms with a door, so I feel like they are more secure going there. And then Scotiabank is a brand that I recognize from back in Canada. Another very popular option for expats here in Playa del Carmen would be using the HSBC ATMs. With the Scotiabank ATMs, I've been charged a fee of 100 pesos per transaction. You're also going to want to maximize how much money you withdraw as each transaction, regardless of the amount, is going to cost you this 100 pesos. The withdrawal limit will likely be around 9,000 pesos, but it could be much lower depending on the ATM that you use, as well as if there are any restrictions that are put on your card by your bank in terms of how much you can withdraw within one transaction or even within one given day. The third money mistake mistake that travelers and expats in Mexico make is underestimating, like I did, just how complicated withdrawing from an ATM can be. It took me a little while to make my first ATM withdrawal because I was presented with different options that I'm not used to seeing where I had the choice to accept or decline. Back in Canada, if I hit decline during any phase of the ATM withdrawal process, the entire transaction would be cancelled. This is not the case with ATMs in Mexico. There are two additional screens that you will likely see and you're going to want to hit decline for both of them. The first option you will be presented with is an offer to pay a fee and hold the conversion rate. Hit decline, you don't need this. The second option you are presented with is to accept the conversion rate. You always want to decline this as well. By clicking continue without conversion, you are instead opting for your bank's rate, which is going to be better than the ATM's rate. You never want to accept the ATM's conversion rate. The fourth mistake that travelers make is not calling their bank and letting them know that they'll be traveling in Mexico prior to their trip. And even if you're already in Mexico and you haven't done this, maybe just let your bank know because it could prevent some of the issues that I'm about to dive into. Notifying your bank of your travel plans will in theory prevent the bank from flagging your card with suspicious activity when it's being used out of your home country and then resulting in freezing your account. I notified my bank of my travel to Mexico before this trip and they still froze my card, which happens at least half the time I travel. So be sure to not only inform your bank of your travels, but also make sure that you have a way to contact them or unfreeze your account while you're abroad. The next common money mistake to make in Mexico is not taking advantage of opportunities to break down larger bills. The ATMs will mainly give you bills that are valued at 500 pesos, which is the equivalent of about 25 US dollars. If you're paying for something at a chain store like Walmart or Oxo, try to break down these large bills as these larger stores are usually going to have the change for you. 
On the contrary, it's common for street vendors or smaller restaurants or convenience stores to not have change for you. This means you may end up paying more than you should be, or you might not be able to make the intended purchase at all. The seventh money mistake is not knowing when or how much to be tipping in Mexico. Tipping is both expected and appreciated, but how much you tip is going to vary by the service. A good general rule of thumb would be to tip between 10 and 15% for things like tours, restaurants, and spa services. You may also want to have 20 to 40 peso bills on hand for smaller things like if someone were to help with your baggage. Although that one's kind of a pet peeve of mine because I usually don't want help with my baggage, but it ends up being someone grabs my bag and starts walking with it and then I feel obligated to pay them and it just drives me nuts. Let me know down in the comments if you've experienced this either in Mexico or anywhere else on your travels. I feel like it is a consistent thing that I experience around the world and it just is... I can carry my own bags. Thank you. So I mentioned that at restaurants, you'll also be expected to tip somewhere between 10 and 15%, but it could even be higher than that, up to 20% if you had excellent service. There is one thing that's a little bit tricky when it comes to paying at restaurants though, if you do intend to pay by credit card or debit card, as opposed to cash. Instead of like in Canada and the US where they will type the amount in and then hand you the terminal where you can add a tip as a percentage or an amount, here in Mexico, the total cost, including your tax and your tip is punched in by the server and then the terminal will be handed to you to make the final payment. You will not be able to add an amount. So you have two options here if you do intend to tip, which you probably should. Option one, which seems to be most common if someone is paying by card, would just be to let the server know how much you would like to add as a tip and they will add it to your total amount before handing you the machine for payment. Option two would be to make the payment for your meal by card, but then leave the amount in pesos on the table for the server after in cash. Let us know down in the comments if you have any additional tips on accessing or spending cash while in Mexico. Another interesting, somewhat related topic to this would be scams here in Playa del Carmen. I have already fallen for at least one of them in my month living here, and we'll be shedding some light on that as well as additional ones to avoid in a future video. Thanks for watching, safe travels, and I'll see you back here for more travel hacks and tips next week. Bye. So this is actually my second attempt to film this video because I made a very stupid mistake in the first filming session and I just could not publish it. Whew. I needed to look up how you pronounce pesos. And the one pronunciation guide that I read pronounced it as pesos. So I filmed an entire video like this. Pesos, pesos, pesos.